are live. And as I'm looking at this in the reflection here, I can tell the lighting's not great. You're gonna, you're gonna have uh, some shadows on my face during this, uh, during this live. Uh, and I apologize for that. I'm traveling right now. Um, we're in a VRBO house. By the way, do you use VRBO? I feel like everybody uses Airbnb. And I feel like VRBO is 10 times better. 10 times, you know, better inventory. Um, a lot more stuff to choose from. Anyways, we're in a VRBO house. And it's really cool. It's got an office in it, which is fun. Um, but the lighting isn't amazing. So forgive me for that. So you're tuning in right now to Six Figure Dog Business. This is a Facebook show that we do every week. Yeah, we broadcast it on um, Grow Your Dog Training Business with Ty Brown, a Facebook page. And we also simulcast it over on eCaller Technologies because we love eCaller Technologies. If you are a dog trainer who does not use eCallers, that's fine. You're still gonna learn a lot from, this, um, from these, uh, these shows that we do every week. Um, and uh, yeah, because we're talking about business here. It just so happens we really like eCaller Technologies and that's why you know, we simulcast with them. They're a great company. But you don't have to use e-callers to be able to get great uh, information on uh, running and growing your dog training business. So what I'm going to talk about today is something, I'm talking about it because it's come up a lot this past week. It's come up on a few different Facebook groups that I'm a member of, you know, for dog trainers, talking about the notion of how do we get our clients to actually do the work? How do we get them to buy in? How do we get them to, how do we get them to want this more and put in the effort? Um, and so, so not only there, but some of my consulting clients, um, the dog trainers that I work with, <coughs> have been asking like, you know, what do we do to get more buy in? How can we get this? Because, um, well, for a lot of reasons, right? I mean, how often do you get frustrated by people who just don't put in the work and don't put in the effort? And you're frustrated because you know that they could do more and the dog could do more. Um, and so what would it be like if that wasn't a big issue anymore? What would it be like if people, you know, enthusiastically put in the effort that they needed to, um, to get, you know, to get to where they want to go? What would it be like if you could actually do things like make guarantees? This is where it's come up is I talk, I've been mentioning in groups that we make guarantees. And the question that people always have is like, how can you make a guarantee? Because you can't, guarantee that they're going to do the work. And so, um, what if you could though? What if you could know that they were going to do the work? Could you guarantee stuff? What if you did know that they were going to put in the work and the effort? Would you be happier because you're, you're getting better results and, and, uh, you're seeing more change and you're making more impact in your community. What would that be like? So I want you to kind of think about that. Like, what would it actually be like? Because too often dog trainers, not dog trainers, people, when they hear, you know, that there's, you know, when we, when they're asked to entertain something that they don't understand, oftentimes shut it down immediately. And they say, nope, it can't be done. You know, people are going to do this, this, and this. Um, and in the meantime, all over the world, people are always doing things that haven't been done and are always changing things and, and figuring out innovation. And those are typically the people who didn't put that in their mind that, no, it can't be done. Clients do this, you know, clients do that. And so innovation and, uh, you know, and when I'm talking about innovation, I'm usually talking about within your own business. There is industry-wide innovation, of course, but innovation within your own business is only going to come from a mindset of, hey, I believe something different can happen. And I believe that, you know, something different than what I've seen can, can happen which a lot of dog trainers struggle with, which ironically is what you're selling all day long. All day long, you're selling people. I know you've been dealing with this problem for weeks, months, or years with your dog, but it doesn't have to be like that. There's an entirely different way to exist with your dog. And so imagine if all of your dog owner clients thought the same way that you did about your business and say, no, I just can't do it. You know, it's uh, this is how clients are. And so therefore, you know, I can't offer guarantees. I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, and it's going to hold you back just like it holds back your clients in their dog's behavior. So, um, so like I say, how do we get that buy-in? I've, uh, I've got some notes here. We're going to talk exactly about how you can increase the buy-in, increase the engagement, and get your people um, working way harder with their dogs, doing way more, and putting you in a position where you're happier 
and you can do things like offer guarantees if that's something that you wanna do. All right, so to me, the problem all starts with one thing. And that one thing is that culturally, as dog trainers, our dog trainer culture is that we blame our clients. Um, and again, it's so ironic because it's like, all of these dog trainers understand this in a different context, but when we apply it to their business, they don't, they don't always get it. What I mean by that is they blame their clients for their clients not putting in the effort. And so again, let me change the context a little bit. How many times you go to a client's home or you're working with a client in a session and they're blaming their dog? You know, my dog does this, my dog does that. He's like this and he's like that. And in your mind, you're like, well, your dog's like that because you allowed him to be like that. There's different ways you can do, you know, and here we're trying to teach you this and you're not paying attention, you know. I know that you've been through that because I know I've been through that. And so, but the natural tendency that people have, and it's almost like a badge of honor amongst many dog trainers, is I teach them what to do. If they don't do it, it's their fault. They're the ones that don't have the effort. They're the ones that aren't putting in the time. They're, they, 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 and it's fingers pointed everywhere. And guess what happens when you do that? You start to otherize your clients and they start feeling like other. Instead, it should be a team effort. You should love your clients, they should love you, and it should be this team effort where you're working together, right? But when it's always they, 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 it, it, it creates this othering process. And whenever you otherize anything or anyone, you lose compassion. And so that's a big starting point for a lot, a lot of dog trainers is their compassion is gone for their clients or it's diminished. And so they don't even want to see, you know, a, a solution to this. They just want to blame the client because the client is the other. And again, this is such a bad way of, of running a business and a bad way of doing things. Um, and it's not the way to get the best results from your clients. So, so like I say, the, the problem starts there with blaming clients and saying they're the ones that aren't doing the work. They're the ones they've been given everything that they need and they're just not doing it. Um, again, this is just like dog owners who say, well, I'm doing everything I know to do and the dog's not doing it. It's his fault, you know, and you know, it's crazy. And I know looking at dog trainers, it's crazy when they're blaming their clients. So how do we fix that? Well, we turn it around and we start blaming ourselves. Now there's some qualifiers here. So stay with me. When I say that you blame yourself, it's a mindset shift where you start looking and saying, okay, they're not doing the work and I'm seeing this problem over and over and over. And if I'm seeing it over and over and over, what can I change in order for that to stop happening? Because if you're running into a problem over and over and over and you don't change anything to fix it, I mean, that's insanity, right? I mean, it's literally, it's not. I know people say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. That's actually not the definition of insanity. That's just kind of a <laughs> something people say. Um, but it's kind of, you know, in this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. That's insanity. When you keep seeing the same problem of people doing stuff over and over and over, and you just keep blaming them, and you hope the next client is gonna be better, it's kind of insane. <laughs> you know, it's not gonna get you to your goals. It's not gonna get you to your goals of a happier, uh, you know, happier career more money, more freedom, etc. It's just not gonna get you there. So start blaming yourself, not in a um, self-flagellation like, oh, woe is me, I'm a bad person, I screwed up. But start looking at the things that you can change that will affect how they do the work. Because you would have to admit, right? Like, let's say that you, you, know, you consider yourself good at what you do, right? You teach well um, and you have a lot of clients that do well, but you have some clients that don't because they don't put in the effort. Um, but anyways, overall, you're very good at what you do. Would you admit that somebody that sucks at dog training and sucks at these things is going to get people to not do very much work, you know, and, and even worse than you? Well, of course. And so if you can accept that, then you can also accept that wherever you are right now, you can be better. And so you're not going to get better until you start identifying the things that you can change in order for them to have more success. Um, and guys, these are concepts that apply everywhere. I mean, if anyone's ever taken relationship training or, or things like that, you know that you're the one that trains people how to treat you. Um, you know that you're only in control of what you can do, but what you can do influences people in different ways. 
um, and it influences people to do more or do less or to do good or to do bad, that you have a great deal of influence, especially as an expert in this industry, you have a great deal of influence. And so you've got to cut this out of your, your vocabulary. Cut it out of your diet entirely of my clients don't do this, they don't do this, they don't do this. Cut it out. When you see those issues, start turning around, flip the conversation, and start asking what can I do so that my clients can have better engagement, better work ethic, whatever it is that you're running into a problem with. And it's so amazing. I don't want to sound like weird foo-foo, you know, like mindset, woo-woo stuff, but it's so amazing the things that your mind will come up with when you haven't limited it. When you limit it and say this is how clients are and it's them, your mind stops thinking and stops putting any attention on it. But when you give your mind permission to find solutions by saying, oh shoot, I keep running into the same problem with my clients, I wonder what I can change so that it gets better, that mindset is so different and I promise you, and it's so weird, ideas come throughout the day as you're doing this, as you're working on other stuff entirely. You're reading a book, you're watching a TV show and information comes in because you allowed it. You, you kept this portal open and information comes in on things that you can do to change. And it's amazing what happens when you don't shut out information. So, so that's the first thing that we've got to do is ask ourselves, well, what can I change? Now, how do we start making determinations? Well, if somebody's not doing in the doing the work, they're not putting in the effort, they're not putting in the time. The you know, first we ask ourselves what we can change, but second we got to know what to change. And so, what to change really um, stems from what is stopping them. Um, so, what stops them from uh, putting in the effort? You know, if, if that's the problem that we're talking about, putting in the time. And so what is stopping them? There's going to be, um, there could be a bunch of things, but there's really going to be a handful of categories of areas that is stopping them. Um, and a good exercise here would be to write them down. In fact, I've got them written down. I've got some things written down here. A good exercise would be to write them down on one column and then on the other column, start looking at things that you can change. So, so for example, what's stopping them? Is it time? Maybe they just don't have enough time. Well, what can you do to change that? You know, so for example, we found, you know, we used to train um, like a lot of trainers do. We would sell like two or three sessions at a time. Um, and because we were doing that, we were like, well, shoot, they've just hired us for a few sessions. I want to make sure we're getting in as much as we possibly can, make them as happy as we can so that we can sell them more. And so we would cram as much as we could into those sessions. And so people would go off and they would do some of it, but frankly, they couldn't do, they couldn't do as much as they needed to um, because they just didn't have the time. When we took our whole process and we elongated it and we made it much longer, um, suddenly people started having more time because we didn't have to ask so much out of them. Now that was just us. Maybe your training style is different, but, um, but is it time? Is time something that's holding them back that they just don't have it? What can you do? Or some trainers can solve the time issue with selling more board and trains, you know, and they don't need to spend as much time. You know, so that's one thing. What about maybe difficulty? Like, is there a difficulty in what you're doing that is holding people back from actually doing it? And so if there is, what can you do to change that? Maybe you break it down into smaller chunks and, you know, instead of like do this hard exercise, we break it down into an easier exercise and another easier exercise, another easier exercise, and then we put it all together. Maybe that's it. Um, or, you know, maybe difficulty as you look at it is, um, you're doing it in the wrong spot. We need to start here where there's less distractions. I don't know. But again, these are things I want you thinking about. Like maybe it's difficulty that's holding them back. And what can I change so that it's less difficult? Um, a big one is they're not seeing into the future, you know, because in the future they kind of have this idea of like, I want my dog to be better but they're not attaching that to, my trainer wants me to use the treat to get him to sit. Here's their goal, here's what the trainer's telling them to do, and there's a big bridge in between, or a big gap rather, and nothing's bridging it. And so this is a big one. A lot of dog owners just aren't putting in the work because they're not seeing how it applies. And they don't even know how to explain that, you know, because they don't have the words. This is not something that they do. Like they might give you some, you know, in a session, they might be like, why are we doing this? Or, you know, maybe they ask some questions, but at the end of the day, you leave and they're sitting there talking and, you know, 
their goal is here and you're asking them here and they don't know what bridges this. And so when they're not seeing into the future, like I said, this might be the biggest one. When they're not seeing into the future on what we do today affects what my life is like a month from now or three months from now or whatever, um, it's really hard for people to get motivated to do the work. Um, so that's another one that's, again, these are reasons I've written down. I would recommend you write down your reasons on why you think that people aren't doing the work. And you can even ask people, but again, people aren't going to even know how to explain it. This is you really getting deep because if you ask people, like you come, you know, you come back for your next session and they haven't done their homework, let me ask you, why didn't you get the homework done? They're going to go to the easiest thing, you know, they're going to be like, oh, we just got busy, we didn't have time. Well, they had time to do a whole bunch of other stuff. They had time to watch an hour and a half of Netflix every day. Why didn't they have time to train their dog? They did have the time, um, but they just didn't, you know, they weren't seeing into the future uh, because you hadn't done a good enough job bridging that gap for them. Or maybe they were super busy. It was like a super busy week and you hadn't done something to make it so that it was gonna be easier bite-sized chunks or whatever the case might be. But what I'm getting at is if you ask them, you, you're gonna get some good feedback, but at the same time, they don't know how to say, well, I'm not attaching you know, what you're teaching me with what my ultimate goals are. They don't know how to say that. You know, Very few people would in most like coaching scenarios where you're coaching them through something. And so they don't know how to put their finger on it. So this really boils down to you. So I've got a couple other things that I wrote here. Low prices often don't create buy-in. And so a lot of times the reasons that people aren't putting in the work is because they just paid you three, four, five hundred dollars and they don't mind, you know, if their dog gets a little bit better from three, four, five hundred dollars, they're cool with that. Um, but they, you know, they don't need the dog to get a whole lot better in order to justify the four hundred dollars that they spent or the five or the six hundred dollars. They don't need it to get a whole lot better. And so you're not going to get a whole lot of buy in all of the time from folks when um, when your prices are low. Um, because you just don't create a whole lot of transformative change when prices are low. Does that make sense? Um, and another one, I think this is also like going along with seeing into the future, this ties in a lot. So many dog trainers sell time and they're not selling any sort of result. And so, you know, somebody has a problem, they talk to you about it and you say, yeah, you know, we, we help people like you all the time. Here, buy five of my sessions or buy four of my sessions, not, buy my program that has all of these different things that helps you get to a result. It's, hey, I think we can help you get there by these sessions. And so <clears throat> what happens is the, the attachment that they have isn't, or, or the, the purchase that they're making isn't tied to an eventual result. You haven't made it clear to them that, hey, here's what my program produces every time. You've simply said, I'm gonna give you X amount of hours and this is what I usually do and we get people that are happy. But do you see the difference there? Like if you've painted the picture for them of what life is like, that you can go to that farmer's market that you wanna to go to, that you can have your dog off leash, that you, can, um, that you can go to the vet's office and not be embarrassed by your dog pulling, that you can have somebody ring the doorbell and you don't have to put the dog away. You know, when you actually have made it real, what the results look like versus here's my problem and we can help you give us five sessions and we'll do some good stuff. It's such a big difference that you, you know, program-based selling, results-based selling, where you're selling a, a signature program that talks all about the results versus a series of, of sessions that you know is X amount of dollars per session type thing. It's such a different mental shift for people to make. And so when their eye is on the prize, to put it that way, and they understand like, hey, here's where we're gonna be, it becomes easier, far easier, for them to put in the work each time. So we used to have this problem with buy-in all the time, you know, people not putting in the effort, and we still do, but it's not, it's not a big thing. You know, and we're a busy company, we're up to eight or nine trainers at this point, you know, we've got a, we, hundreds and hundreds of clients a year, <coughs> and we don't really have a big problem, every, again, every now and then, but we don't have a really big problem with people not willing to put in the effort because we do program-based selling, you know, we've worked it out so that they can, they have the time, the difficulty level is low, we help them see into the future, and it's a program where, hey, we want you to participate in this whole program. Like so many times, how many times have you sold somebody five sessions? 
and you're on the third session and they're like, actually, we're good. And they're good because their dog is better and you're happy because their dog is better and they're happy and maybe they even write you a review. But their dog is better, but it didn't get over here where you know the dog could be because you never promised them over here. You just said, hey, you got these problems, let's do these five sessions and we're gonna make your life better. And so there wasn't anything to really look forward to, so even slight improvement makes some people happy. And, and they're better off. And then, like I say, now you're doing more sessions and they're just not doing any work because they're like, well, the dog's actually better. Again, they didn't have anything to tie it to. They didn't, have, they didn't see into the future. So like I say, you're, you know, doing what I'm talking about, you're still gonna end up with problems. There's no such thing as a problem-free business. Um, but if you can change the conversation in your, in your mind about, let me stop blaming my clients, let me start blaming myself, and let me take a step back from there and say, okay, now that I'm blaming myself, what's stopping them that I can fix? And I can guarantee you there's a lot of things, and most of them are actually quite simple. Some of them are even just <sighs> framing and, and scripting things, how you present the solution, how you sell, how you, you know, so many of those things are, are really that simple. But when you do it, it puts you in a position where you get so much more buy-in. Again, you know, for us where we've got eight train, or I think it's nine, I gotta count, because we just brought on some new ones. For us where we've got nine trainers and everyone's producing very similar type results um, and every client is doing the work, basically, again, every now and then someone's not, but you know, most of the clients are really putting in the work, how could we do that? Well, this is exactly how we did it. I actually didn't even realize it until this week where I was realizing, hey, we don't have this problem hardly at all anymore. And we're training hundreds and hundreds of dogs a year. So how is that possible? How is it possible? And so I kind of broke it down and figured out, oh, this is how we did it. We didn't set out to do it. The reason we did it is we knew that the signature program was important and we knew, there's a lot of things that we knew that were important, but once we put it together, I realized, oh, all of these things actually turned our, you know, turned into us getting way better clients. And we're probably getting the same clients as before. It's just the messaging is so different. Everything's so different that, um, uh, that the client performance is so much different. So any case, um, hopefully that's making sense. If you need some help with this, go down below. I've got a link where you can schedule a phone call with me. On that phone call, we're gonna talk about your business, see where we can make you some extra money. And I can even tell you about how we do our coaching program. Um, you can schedule that call below. Thanks for watching. Watch again next week. And oh, leave comments if you've got questions. Um, and and obviously, you know, during this lesson, I don't, I'm not typing comments out, but I'm happy to come back later and, uh, um, you know, answer questions and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.